Welcome to another episode of Call to Marriage. I'm Marcia. And I'm Thomas. Well, today's episode was inspired by an epiphany that I recently had. And uh, I'll give the back story. <laughs> so... <laughs> Early on in our marriage, I have no idea what we were fighting about. You know, it's true what they say. A lot of times the fights that you have are over the smallest things that don't even matter and you don't even remember later on. So side note, that doesn't have to do with the main topic, but take care to (laughs) um, kind of pay attention to the small things because those are the like insidious things that can rot your marriage from the Mm -hmm. core. You know, as opposed to people are often thinking of the big things, money and cheating and all those kind of things. But it's sometimes it's the everyday things that just (laughs) sneakily, you know, erode your marriage. Yeah. So that's exactly right. (laughs) But anyway, so I don't know what we were arguing about, but I remember that um, Thomas called me self-centered. It's probably a bad idea. Please don't call your wife that. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember that? I do. Okay. Yeah, I don't... I genuinely... I don't think you had said, like, you are self-centered. But but you just, you know, matter of fact, like, just point blank, you know, you're you're self-centered, you know? (laughs) And I was just so upset because I could not (laughs) conceive of the possibility... That I was a self-centered person. I consider myself self-aware, mostly. (laughs) And it just seemed so far from me. I could not accept that. I couldn't take that on. Like, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I'm upset. Like, (laughs) anyway. You're wrong there. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And it really took me a long time to even begin to understand that he was right. And like I said, then recently I had an epiphany that he's absolutely (laughs) right. And I am (laughs) self-centered. So sad. Um, But you know, it's it's a joyous thing because the first step in being able to resolve something is being is recognizing that it's there in the first place. Like you have a problem. (laughs) So (laughs) now that I, you know, realize that I can work on it, I can bring it to the Lord. But, you know, mm-hmm. self, self-centeredness is also rooted in pride, which I know is something that I struggle with. Pride is like the biggest sin and that probably most people struggle with to a degree. Yeah. And self-centeredness, I think, has its roots in pride. So somehow it all makes sense. But, so you, sorry, but mm-hmm. when I said that, you, I think part of the reason why you got so mad <laughs> <laughs> Was because you, it sounded like selfishness to you. Also true, which I don't know. Like I looked in the dictionary before we did this just to really see what the distinction was, and they almost seem the same. Self centered just be feels, yeah, yeah, they can be synonymous, yeah. But yeah. I guess self centeredness feels a more like a neutral word. But for me, okay, in my own words or from my own thoughts, selfishness is you're only thinking about yourself. You don't want to share with people. You put yourself before others. You, um, selfish. Yeah, you just think of yourself, basically. All you think about is yourself. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Um, and I don't consider my. I don't see myself in that light, I guess. Which I don't, and I don't think you are. Yeah, I try to be generous. I try to think of other people's feelings, you know, things like that. So, but self-centeredness is, to use the word insidious again, it is, it's insidious because like you, I didn't even realize that I was thinking of myself Mm -hmm. because I was just kind of like feeling my feelings and I'm like, you know, I have a right to feel my feelings, you know, <laughs> like yeah. and they're valid, you know? And so it's not, I'm not me feeling my feelings is not me trying to dismiss your feelings, but it's me trying to kind of sort through my feelings and acknowledge them and whatever. 
But that just becomes a whole thing, you know? And next thing you know, everything's all about you. you th that wasn't my intention, but that's what happens. And so, okay, to finally get to the story. Yeah, bless me. you. <laughs> <laughs> to finally get to the story. So we're in a meeting, a personal meeting. Thomas and I have like business meetings where we think, you know, creatively and try to make plans for the future, vision casting, whatever. Okay, so mm -hmm. I was not happy about something and but i couldn't quite put my finger on why it was bothering me so much so i didn't want to say anything because it seemed trivial so i tried to push through it but i couldn't <laughs> i was not happy and so of course that eventually messed up the mood of what we were trying to do you know so eventually he asked me thomas asked me um or he said i don't like your mood or your attitude, your energy, you know? And I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't like it either. And it took me, you know, a while. And then I had to like force myself through, you know, through gritted teeth to mm -hmm. try to explain why, you know, I was feeling the way that I was feeling. <laughs> and okay, so, so funny. <laughs> the thing was something that could be resolved simply. So Thomas resolved it and move directly on to what it was that we were trying to do. And in that moment, he was so mature that I it forced me to have to be <laughs> mature because even after the thing is resolved, there's still a lingering feeling. It can be still hard to get back to, you know, um, uh, an even emotion. So, but I tried hard because he was so mature in that moment that and I didn't expect it either because he would have had the right to and there have been times when he has you know kind of fed off my energy and then also been in a bad mood and then we don't get anything done we don't want to do it anymore let's just forget about it come back to it later yeah. you know um so later on after our meeting's over then or somewhere when he took a break I brought up the fact that oh my gosh like I just had a realization what you meant because uh, here I am. We're up trying to, to up to three, <laughs> <laughs> literally, because we've been married for over three years now, and right, that for almost three and a half years, right? And that argument was like pretty early on in our marriage. So I'm like, man, you know, I am self centered because I was just I couldn't stop thinking about my feelings in order for us to accomplish something that we were trying to accomplish together, and the idea of not being self-centered is putting, being able to put your feelings aside for the greater good of what we're trying to accomplish, you know, or yeah. for our greater like good that. as a couple or whatever. Yeah. So I just, it took him modeling for me, putting before us the thing we, we set out to do and pushing past his own feelings that would have, been equally valid to mine and making sure that we go on to do the thing. And and he did it without any bad emotion. Like it wasn't just that he didn't like say, well, I'm not happy now. I don't want to do it anymore, whatever. But even in moving on, he also didn't even have like a poor tone or any residual feeling like, um, you know, when you can kind of feel that you can feel it in the air, even when you're trying to move past the thing, but you can't move past it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, in that moment, I realized now I understand, like I am self-centered. <laughs> I was about to make this thing all about me and not intentionally, but it's, yeah, we have to do like, your emotions are real, they're valid, but you have to be able to manage them. Like that is a, an aspect of maturity. So it's something that I need to work on. <laughs> so I haven't always been like this, by the way. Like she said, there have been times when I've I also, you know, um, after a situation like that, felt not able to move on. Because it, was, it would become hard for me. Um, so I've, I've felt in the past, after having a conversation like that, that, you know what? I don't I don't think I want to do this right now. Maybe this <laughs> is not a... so bad, too. 
maybe this is not the right time to get this done. So I, I guess I've grown too, and I, she is growing too, mm. and that's the whole point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. There's a testimony right there. I can thank God for that. Not because I've overcome, yeah. but just because we have come a long way. Yeah, we know? have. Hearing you say everything you said now, it's it just sounds good. Um, how you are processing it now, how you are able to put words on it to describe it. It sounds good. And I am also learning from it, even now hearing you say it. It sounds very much sure of you to think it through like that and be able to come to the conclusion that um, she literally made it, this podcast out of that situation. And it's it's nice um, when you have a partner like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's kind of embarrassing, but then I really do feel like it could be for somebody's edification out there. Somebody's yeah. struggling in their marriage, you know, arguing over the same old silly things. <laughs> so, um, or struggling to get past certain things. So, but I, but it also, it really does give me a sense of gratitude toward God. You know, they say, and I, and it's true, marriage is a mirror. Yeah. And so in marriage, we are, our partners reflect, reflect us, us back to ourselves. So I've had to become acutely aware of all of my everything, my good, my, but also a lot, all my flaws, the things that I, yeah. yeah, all my shortcomings. And yeah, I've become just acutely aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. It's a healthy thing because it gives you so much opportunity for growth. Yeah. And it also teaches you, you know, commitment because commitment isn't just for someone who's perfect, you know, and it's not just for the good times. Commitment is through everything, through thick and thin. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's we're in covenant. Yeah, right. So, Which is what marriage is built on. Um, if that is not present, um, it's not a proper marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't believe in prenups. <laughs> if you go into marriage, thinking, that's complicated. But you know, <laughs> if you go into marriage, yeah, you're I agree right. With I agree. You. Though, <laughs> thinking, I'll get out when it doesn't feel good, mm -hmm. and we all we are going to be okay with that. Um, it's not a godly form of marriage that we know. It, it can so you know pass for marriage, but from our perspective as Christians. Um, we don't we don't believe that, and that's the whole premise to marriage: the 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 idea that we are in this together, the idea that um, it, it's like you know reflecting the marriage between Christ and the church, which we all um, understand as Christians. The idea that we are going to make this work, no matter how bad it gets, it's good, it's nice. Um, it gives a sense of security, which is something we're going to talk about probably in our next podcast. Mm. That's what binds the marriage. The mm. assurance that my partner is there. Even when they're mad and they're in the other room and you don't want to talk to them, the, the assurance, the hope that we're going to make it work. We don't know how. I don't feel good now. I'm getting all you know these negative emotions now, but we're going to make it work. Mm -hmm. That assurance is what triggers the strength, whatever little strength we have in us, to sometimes let go, to sometimes forgive, to sometimes push through our pain and our hurt to say, I love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I care about you. Um, to put the other person first. And it's good because if you take that away, uh, you know, it's, it won't be a strong marriage. One last thing before we go to the scripture, which we didn't lead with this time, but we ain't going to leave without a scripture, okay? Sure. Get that word in. But before we get the word in, um, from your perspective, just, you know, maybe it'll help a, a man out there listening yeah. for, or the person in the relationship who, you know, <laughs> you know, in the moment needs to be the bigger person. Yeah. So, because it could be the other person, it could be the girl or the woman. But, um, 
So in that moment, how did you feel or how did you go about handling it? Or what was your thought process that helped you to be able to be the bigger person to go high? <laughs> like Michelle Obama says. <laughs> yeah. You've probably heard me say this so many times that in marriage, somebody is going to have to carry the cross. And we all, we are, you know, individually, we are carrying our own crosses, our own cross as Christians. But because we are one in marriage, there's a cross to carry in the marriage. And one of the things that I always talk about is to not allow yourself to be the channel through which, you know, something comes into the marriage to sort of <laughs> make things difficult. So it's just being on guard. First of all, it's just being on guard. You see there's a negative emotion. And I didn't always know this, by the way. Um, it's something I've learned um, in the past three years of being married to my wife. So as a man, I'm always trying to be on guard. I see things happen. I see you're not feeling good. And I know mm, something is boiling. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I need to be careful. You know, I need to be careful. Whatever it is, I need to be able to tame it and not let it, you know, spiral into something that might affect us as a family. We have a kid now that might affect the whole, the mood of the house. And we start, you know, behaving in, in a certain way, which I don't like, which she doesn't like either. So it's just being alert and seeing things from that perspective, the, that against us perspective. This isn't happening. It's not good for us. The way you're feeling is not good for us. So it's not her against me. It's whatever she's feeling is not good for us. And I need to be present. I need to arm myself to be able to help us deal with that. But it just happened that it came through her. She was the one not feeling good, but it's actually an us problem because here we were trying to do something together, us. And then all of a sudden this feeling, you know, pops in and it's trying to distract us, not distract her. Mm. So it's just mounting your guard and saying, uh-uh, you are not going to take us away from what we are trying to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just look past your spouse, look past your husband or wife and say, this is against us and we need to deal with this. And how do you help them? You have to go low. <laughs> it is hard, but you have to go low, you know. Somebody is always going to have to carry the cross to say, you know what, um, I'm going to carry the cross until you're ready for us to get even. When and you so say, I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, when, you can go on. When you say go low, because earlier I said go high like Michelle Obama says, but when you said go low, you mean to be get down low, like be humble. Right? Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to also feel like, well, I need to be heard too. And I don't like how you're sitting around feeling and I don't like your mood. I don't like this. That's mm -hmm. going high. That's like, well, I care about myself as well. But to go low is to say, um, so you're feeling high. <laughs> you're not, you're not in, your, in your good mood. You know, this is not you. But I need to calm down. So a different way of saying it is trying to manage the mood, trying to manage the environment. Mm -hmm. I want to be even. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be too high and I don't want to be too low. Mm -hmm. You want to bring everything back to neutral a little bit. A neutral, at a balanced state, everyone can be their best. So when she is there, I have to be there. And then when she starts you know, coming down from her up, I have to meet her mm -hmm. so that we are both even. So that's the idea. It's like pe different people have said it in different ways. Like I heard Bruce Lee says, it'll be like water, um, take the shape or form of the bottle or the container yeah, that you write. People mm -hmm. say it's a yin and the yang, however you choose to say, you say it. I call it meekness, you know, when you have the strength, when you have the power, and in most cases, when you have the right, when it would make sense for you to also react, mm. you choose to keep your sword in your in your sheet 
it's not that you don't have a sword, but you do, but you know, keep your strength under control. Mm. So don't draw your sword, just keep it. Your mm. wife knows you have a sword too. Like she, she just said it. Like you could have also fed off of my, um, my negative emotions, but don't do it. Be meek, and that's exactly what Christ calls us to do to mm -hmm. take my yoke learn from me for i'm gentle and i'm meek and he says his yoke um it's not burdensome even though it, you know carrying a yoke is not easy but it's not burdensome when you actually think about it when you go low and try to breathe in a little bit and let your wife come back it's good it's not burdensome it's it's not the hardest thing to do but when you try to go high, which I have done in the past, and that's why I'm able to know that, nah, going high doesn't help. Mm. It becomes burdensome. Mm. When you go low and you become, it might sound as though you are a fool. Why aren't you also mad? Why aren't you also responding? But you're not. You're being strong. It takes strength to be able to say, I can draw my sword, you know, and get into this fight, but I'll keep it in the sheath. Can we get even? Can we move on? And the second part is um, you can do all of these, but moving on is also, you know, another thing. You can not react. You can be okay, but still harbor some feelings in you, which is even harder than taming your, your mouth or your tongue. Mm. Because you might say, well, I'm not mad. I'm okay. I'm fine but deep inside you <laughs> and you can't hide that. It's like fire, you know, mm -hmm. you let it out. You, you try to keep it in. It burns you. You try to let it out. You risk burning the other person that how people Confucius described like secrets, for example. So in this particular one, it would be, well, I did good. I didn't re react or respond to you with that same energy. But how about moving forward? Can we go back to what we set out to do? Mm -hmm. That is also hard. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible, but it is, you know, it's hard. I need to acknowledge that it's hard to take a deep breath to say, okay, now that we're over this, can I gather whatever energy I have in me right now to have us move on? Mm -hmm. um, it takes practice. It takes, like I said, I have failed so many times and that's how I know. When I don't do that, it doesn't help. Whether I, I didn't, you know, I, I responded in the right way or in a good way, we still have to be able to move on. And that's what I try to do, sort of like refocus as well. Now that we've addressed this, can we, you know, go back to what we were doing and sort of bring that positive? Because once we, we talk about that, she's not feeling good. You know, it's not nice to be the one drawing us back. So I then have to give her or, you know, re refill her so that we can move on. And how you do that is just being positive, letting her know it's it's done. We, we're done with this. Like, we're not going to give this a chance. We're done. I'm not feeling any way about this. I'm not keeping anything. I'm not going to bring it back again. We're moving on. And how you do that is, you know, you measure your tone. You keep your smile on. You try to be positive. You stay on the on the topic with enthusiasm to make her feel like, yeah, he's he's really getting us to do this. And then, you know, her gauge will fill up again and she would obviously come to that same um, measure that you are. And that's good. And that's how we did it. We ended up talking and doing the task that we had before us and we did it beautifully. It was a successful meeting and our day just went on like nothing happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it's just being true to yourself, being genuine. If I honestly felt like I couldn't move on, I would have told her. But um, with with practice and with, I would say it's a spiritual exercise, you know, to see past your spouse so that it's, it's not about her. So why do you have to be mad at her? I don't have to be mad at her so I can move on with her now that I have her back. And I'm actually happy that she's back into her mood because I want to see her in that way. So we can work together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so my mind was just running when you were talking because I, I paused at a place when you mentioned about Jesus saying that his yoke is easy. I just, my mind lingered there. And then I found myself 
<clears throat> processing that. I remember times like at CIFC, I remember somebody gave a message about yokes and showed the picture of what a yoke is like. I don't remember it was if it was our, about this. It was in our small group. It was Tinashe. Oh, yeah. When I was on, when we had a small group on good. my campus. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Tinashe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, was it this scripture that he was talking about? Or was it in it was, I can't remember. Are you in Luke? Matthew. Matthew? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was one of the scriptures he used. Mm. But so the reason why I lingered on it is because initially I was thinking like the you were talking about meekness and and then taking on Jesus's yoke. But in the moment you're feeling, you know, upset about the thing. So if it seems like something heavy. Yeah. To like take on a yoke, but then it's like his yoke is easy. Right. So then how are you navigating that? I don't know. I was trying to I was trying to think through that. But then so it says, this is from Matthew eleven, verses twenty eight 28. and twenty nine and thirty. Starting from twenty eight. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yeah. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am yeah, gentle sense. and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so I thought to myself, like, you know, taking on a yoke is not easy. But then I thought, well, if you're burdened and heavy laden and you're alone and then you become yoked to Jesus and Jesus is carrying with you and walking with you, mm -hmm. all of a sudden your burden becomes light. Yeah. It's a dual fold revelation. Yeah. That's powerful. Yeah. Mm. On one end, it's a hard calling, you know, to live as a Christian. And Jesus himself went through it. It's not an easy one. But then again, it's easy. Mm. <laughs> it's light. It's, it's, it was it's better than one, so right. it's definitely going to be easier. Mm -hmm. His ordinances, his instructions to us are easy. They are life. Mm -hmm. But on the, on the other hand, it's it they're hard <laughs> mm -hmm. because we have so we have so many things that we have to let go mm -hmm. in order to become that, and that's what makes it hard for us. So, so. I want to say one more thing too, and you made me think of um or an, another time when you were talking earlier on in this conversation. I also imagined um something comparable to this yoke analogy that we're talking about, but. Um, if you, if you're yoked, so two is better than one, but if you're yoked to someone who's difficult, <laughs> you're yoked to a bull, <laughs> it's going to be hard. You know, they're going to be aggressing and like resisting at every turn. And it's going to be hard for you guys to they move become forward a dead together. Weight. Yeah. It's like a it's dead way in civil engineering. Yeah. So Talking about that heart posture of humility, Jesus said he's yeah. he's low in he's lowly in heart, and that is so important that we are lowly in heart when we're yeah. yoked, especially when we're yoked to someone. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so that this is what it was when you were talking about carrying a cross, like yeah. the two of us together. So if like a cross has you know, this, the horizontal and the vertical. the vertical. So if I'm on this horizontal and you're on the right side of the horizontal, you know, sat, um, bar of the cross or whatever, like if I become weak, so you're going to have to exert more energy or you're going to have to. So Solomon says in Ecclesiastes. Yeah. If the ax is down, more strength is needed. Mm. So you're going to have to take on more burden. Yeah. Which is a, self-sacrificing thing to do so we can't be self-centered in relationship we have to be self selfless rather and self-sacrificing you need to lowly. get out of the center yeah as quickly as you can. when you find yourself being at the center where things are starting to revolve around you and you, your partner is not revolving around you you need to get out like you need to run <laughs> run out 
So in the analogy of, like say, two, two bulls or cows yoked together working, when one becomes a dead weight and they fall off and maybe they're not willing to go plowing, you can't move on. You can't make it all about you. What do you do? You also have to go down with him. Else he's going to yank your neck. <laughs> mm. The dead one is going to yank the stand. If you keep standing and keep mounting up, like, get up, get up. Why are you doing? No, you can't do that. Mm. The, the wisest thing to do is to go down, mm. you know, go down with them so that you you, you don't get hurt. Well, see, now you're making me also think of agreement, which is another concept that fits into everything we're talking yeah. about. And it's very important. Yeah. In a marriage. Yeah. yeah. So I, what, what what was going on in my mind was, no, you, I don't like your mood. You're not feeling good. And I, I could care less about what we are doing now. But we can do it another day. And I always talk about what we are becoming as being more important than anything. If doing this is making you feel this way, I, I want to put that aside. Which is something I did not <laughs> understand at first. That was also a point of argument in the past. Yeah. Man. So I don't want to keep doing this as though this is the most important thing to me. I don't want to keep doing this as though just because I called us to do this. Like, I'm okay not moving on, but we need to deal with this becoming of yours. You're becoming something. Mm -hmm. Your mood is changing. You know, you're not sounding your greatest. And I want to be able to address that and have you come back to your, you know, your normal self so that we can move on. So we are at our greatest when we are together. In other words, I prefer us being together and failing than being successful and having you in your little corner dealing with whatever difficulty you are, you know, dealing with. So in marriage, um, and don't get me wrong, individual successes are not unimportant. They are. But if the marriage is going to thrive, we are going to have to be on a level pegging, enjoying mm -hmm. the successes together. If I am enjoying one success and my wife is not with me, it's meaningless. I don't. I don't want it. Um, whereas when we are when we are together, doing something, and maybe we are only getting to fifty percent of what I could. I'm getting it <laughs> all mixed up. Mm -hmm. If I could get to a hundred alone, and have my wife at zero, it's nothing. It mm -hmm. means nothing. But we could together get to fifty, and that's good. That's okay for us. As you know. As a married couple. So so that, that reminds me of, I literally looked up this proverb because it came to mind. It's an African proverb, apparently. I Googled it. I what know. does it say? That if you want to go fast, go alone. alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Like that's yeah. something I had to remind myself recently because it feels like we're going so slowly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, that's, but that's exactly right. Like because yeah. we want to go far, we're making sure that we drag each other to where we're going right we're literally holding each other by the hand like you can't get you know we're yoked so you can't get further than me yep. we have to go together yeah and there's a lot of wisdom in that which means when you try to um focus too much on the on the destination at the expense of lo losing the unity mm -hmm. the bond that you have in the end the the victory is going to be distasteful mm -hmm. because you're going to be on the end and be thinking about where your spouse is. Mm -hmm. And see, this is like a little um, prelude to the next episode, but like you are protecting me slash our marriage. You're protecting our marriage by doing that. And that's kind of what I didn't understand because I felt like it wasn't, I understood that you know, the marriage is a, the most important thing. But I insisted that we can do this. Like, we can do both. But sometimes it's it's not in that moment. Like, there needs to be, like, sometimes things just need to be revisited. And so when he would stop and say, you know, it's not worth it. I don't want to do this anymore, whatever. I used to always feel like you were giving up. 
And like, I used to get so frustrated. I'm like, you, you're, it feels like you're always yeah, that's giving up. Like, else, she, also, she also told me. Yeah, it's like, I know you're often. mad or I'm mad or whatever, but like, let's just like fight to figure out what. But there's a point at which when you're in, in conflict that you're just like making each other crazy at some point. You're just talking in circles. <laughs> you're talking past each other so badly that you literally feel crazy. Like what in the world? It becomes so frustrating. Yeah. And so honestly, stopping really is the best thing. And um, our marriage really is the most important thing. But yeah. by God's grace, we'll accomplish everything that he's purposed for us to do. Yeah. You know, and it may be slow, but we want to go together. So, <laughs> right. Sometimes you just, you know, even in, mil in, in military warfare, you, you want to retreat. Um, if you don't retreat, you're going to risk more casualty. Mm. So you pull out your troops, take them to the base, re-strategize, mm. and you come back stronger. Mm. You don't want to make the battle the most important thing. Mm -hmm. You want your troops to feel important to you. I don't want to take mm -hmm. my troops to the battle line and have 90% of them dead mm -hmm. and celebrate the victory with just the 10% remaining. We're going to spend, you know, the victory hour morning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who, who wants that? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can do it. We can push through it and say... We did it, but no one is really happy about the thing we did. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. do you want to risk your troops? So I, I think of it in military times, like, um, we can keep fighting this, but there is no taste here. Mm -hmm. There is no joy here to be had. Yeah. Why don't we retreat and re-strategize? The next time we come back to this, we're going to come back stronger mm -hmm. because we're going to do our homework. So it's not a giving up. It's just retreating. Mm -hmm. going back to base <laughs> I'm not sure if you have anything else to say I now feel like the scripture that we often start with is going to become the takeaway that's, that's going to be my let's takeaway let's do that Yeah. <laughs> okay so the scripture that we had in mind to read uh, related to this topic comes from Philippians chapter 2 and I'm going to read verses 3 and 4 do you want to read or should I read you can read. <laughs> okay, I'll read. <laughs> Philippians 2, starting from verse 3. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, mm -hmm. but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but, for, but also for the interests of others. Amen. Amen. Yes, that's the takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the mind of Christ. Yep. That Paul talks about. Mm -hmm. Taking yourself out of the center and putting the other person there and serving them. That's what um, Christianity is about. Mm -hmm. And certainly that's what marriage is about. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means when... The Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Mm -hmm. It's hard. How did Christ love the church? Christ died for his bride. He sacrificed for his, his church. and But it wasn't a, a, a futile death. It wasn't a death for nothing. The church became more glorious, and Christ himself was glorified. So it's not just a sacrifice for nothing. There is, there is a reward for it. So you can do it with that in mind. You're not foolish. You're not stupid when you're being patient. You're not being a fool. Um, yeah, it's not that you're not standing up for yourself. There is no standing up for yourself in marriage. You're not standing up against anyone. You're standing up against yourself if you do it. Paul talks about it. No one hates his own body. Just as the church is the body of Christ, and Christ will not hate the church. If Christ hates the church, he's hating his own body. So if I, a man, a husband, looks at my wife as a different entity, I'm, I'm wrong. She is my body. She is my increase. The church is the increase of Christ. In the church, Christ is multiplied. The life of Christ becomes a lot. In my wife, 
life is multiplied. She is my celebration. She is my crown. She is my honor. Why would I hate her? Why would I um, look at her in any other way or in a different way um, and not this way? It's a beautiful thing to think about. And once you start looking at it that way, you see the enemy in your marriage and you see your wife as, you know, needing the help and the support that she she desires or she requires to thrive. And it's a joy giving her that. Mm-hmm. Another thing I was going to say, this is not related, so it's not, or it's related, but it's not quite a takeaway. It's more just like a little tip. It crossed my mind when we were talking, so it's a little pro tip, marriage tip. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? While we're on the topic of conflicts and arguments and things like that, although I haven't done this in a while, but it also speaks to the fact that we haven't really had major conflicts <laughs> in a while. Yay, thank so, God. <laughs> <laughs> but... When you're in conflict, hold hands when you talk to each other because it will help you measure your emotions and your yeah. tone. Right. Yeah. So a little pro tip there. If you're, you know, listening to this and you relate to the feeling of, you know, being in conflict with your partner uh, in the moment, it's not as, you know, easy as it is, like <laughs> it seems as we're talking about it right now. No, it's not. Yeah. And we have failed so many times. Yeah. So, so many times. Yeah. But hold hands. <laughs> You'll get through it. amen amen well thank you for being with us yeah thanks for listening we love you we love you (laughs)